Hi everyone, and today I'm looking at something really quite interesting from a new Chinese lens manufacturer, Venus Optics. A 60mm f2.8 2 1 macro lens from their Lauer range. It's primarily designed for APS-C cameras, but will work with full frame cameras very well, except for some vignetting in the edges. More on that later. This lens has the distinguished ability of being able to focus twice as closely as other macro lenses without the need of extension tubes, a double macro lens if you will. It costs around $400, a reasonable price for a specialist macro lens. As a new manufacturer on the market, Venus Optics are evidently trying to make their mark by offering unique products. And they're clearly confident about what they're making, as they sent me a sample lens a few weeks ago to test out. Let's see how it works. 60mm is shorter than the usual 100mm focal length for a macro lens. The lens's design probably incorporates using the extension tube principle, which would be helped out by that shorter focal length. Well, whatever the reason, as a 60mm lens that means its angle of view is still wide enough to be used for general purpose photography, and also that you'll need to get pretty close to your subject if you are shooting close up. The maximum aperture of f2.8 is pretty standard. It lets in a reasonably good amount of light, and means you can get somewhat out of focus backgrounds in your normal pictures, but normally in macro photography you stop down a bit to f5.6 or f8 for the extra depth of field. And being able to get twice as close as a normal macro lens is actually really fun. Here's a picture taken of some lavender at life size by a regular macro lens, the Canon 180mm L. And here's as close as the Lauer lens can bring you. Macro photography is well known for being pretty enjoyable, and getting this close to your subject for a 2 to 1 image is even more fascinating. You're going to want to use a good tripod with this, or any other macro lens, unless you're shooting outside on a bright day. Let's take a look at the build quality. This is the first lens I've seen that comes shrink wrapped. Here's how it first came in its box sealed for freshness. Well, the lens itself is not very big, and its body is made completely of metal. Well, except for the glass optics, of course. Even the grip around the focus ring is a part of the metal body. Makes a nice change, the lens feels manufactured to a high standard. This is a completely manual lens. Manual focus, manual aperture. The focus ring turns quite smoothly and precisely as does the aperture ring, which has slight indents at each f-stop, down to f22, although my copy of the lens could actually go a little darker. A nice feature is that the lens's iris has 14 aperture blades for extremely smooth bokeh when you're stopped down. An interesting feature of the lens is that, as you focus further away down to infinity, the front element recesses deeply into the body, which turns itself into a very deep lens hood. That's helpful, because it's when you're using this lens for normal photography that you'll probably most want a lens hood, keep the sun out of the picture. Overall, the build quality of this lens is excellent, so long as you're happy with focusing manually. My best tip is to use live view mode on your camera. Let's see about image quality then, firstly on a full frame camera, a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. Straight from f2.8, image quality is razor sharp in the middle of the image with very good contrast. Let's see about the corners, and here, the lens is also excellently sharp, with not a hint of chromatic aberration. That's a fantastic performance. The corners will stay quite dark though, even down to f5.6 or f8. The lens stays very sharp indeed, even down to f22. As I mentioned, on my copy of the lens you could stop the aperture down a bit further, but due to the physical effects of diffraction, the image just became soft, as you'd expect. So apart from the somewhat dark corners, we get a really fantastic performance out of the lens on a full frame camera. Alright, let's see about the performance on APS-C, in this case an 18 megapixel Canon 6DD. At f2.8, the lens is averagely sharp in the middle of the image, and just as good in the corners. Simply stop down to f4 though, and we get back up to the sharpness we saw on full frame, and we get even brightness across the whole image frame too. That sharpness continues down to f8, until about f16. 
so again, we see a fantastic performance, although you get a reward for stopping the lens down just a little. Let's take a look now at vignetting and distortion. They're not a problem at all on an APS-C camera, but if we look at things on a larger sensor full-frame camera, we pick up a few issues. The lens projects a strong pincushion distortion, which is unusual, and on full frame we do see noticeable vignetting. Those corners are quite dark at f2.8. At f5.6 they get a little brighter, and at f11 we see the most even illumination the lens can give. But as I mentioned, it's not a problem at all if you're using an APS-C camera. Now let's see about the all-important close-up image quality. Here's a little George V sixpence from 1935, and here it is from the lower lens's perspective. At f2.8, not only do we get a tiny depth of field, but also very good sharpness in the areas that are in focus. Stop down to f4 for perfect sharpness and contrast. The image continues to be very sharp up to f11. At f16, the physical effects of diffraction are kicking in, as with any other lens, and the image begins to get softer. At f22, we get a soft image due to that worsening diffraction. But overall, Venus Optics should be really proud of themselves, as this lower lens is easily as sharp as any other macro optic on the market. It's an excellent performer. Now let's see how the lens works against bright lights. Thankfully, as I mentioned before, the front element is recessed into the body at normal focal distances, because when bright lights are in the picture, we pick up quite a lot of flaring. To be fair though, I've never tested a macro lens that performed well against bright lights. Finally, let's see about bokeh. This lens gives you very nice out-of-focus backgrounds indeed, especially helped by the 14 aperture blades that make up its iris mechanism. We see no problems here at all. Overall, the Lauer 60mm f2.8 is a pretty quirky lens, which is actually very enjoyable indeed to use. Somehow I found it a lot more fun getting as close as 2 times magnification than with the standard life-size magnification of a normal macro lens. Things like this tiny drop of water turned to ice suddenly become alive. It's a slightly uncomfortable lens on full frame cameras, where we see problems with vignetting and distortion, although actually they didn't bother me particularly in use. I just cropped out the vignetting in my landscape pictures, and you don't notice those problems at all when shooting close up. It's a truly excellent lens for APS-C cameras though, and whatever camera you use, it's an impressively sharp lens with no chromatic aberration. Here it is, mounted with an adapter onto my newest mirrorless camera, where it also makes a very nice pairing. It has very good build quality indeed, while not being too big to carry around with you easily. I found this piece of kit to be a lot of fun myself. It's strangely pleasing to get so close to your subject without fiddling about with the extension tubes, so I can definitely recommend this lens to fans of macro photography.